known to have its origins in ancient Babylonia at around 2000 BCE with the discovery of information encoded in the cuneiform tablets. Greeks developed a significant astronomical understanding under the natural philosophers like Aristarchus of Samos who studied the phenomenon of eclipses in 230 BCE. But there are significant contributions that have been provided by Indian astronomy since the prehistoric era. The Surya Siddhanta is considered to be one of the oldest astronomical texts in India. But did you know that this Siddhanta might be as old as 5000 BCE? That seems astonishing to imagine that about 7000 years before the present, the people of ancient India were intellectual enough to study astronomy. In the next few minutes, we are going to explore the dating of this text by some astronomical references mentioned in Surya Siddhanta. The word Siddhanta in Sanskrit means a treatise and it usually has the author's name prefixed to it. Ancient Indian lore speaks of 18 such works on astronomy, many of which have since been lost to us. The first three, namely Surya Siddhanta, Brahma Siddhanta and Soma Siddhanta are the oldest and indeed so old that their authors are represented as the divinities Surya, Brahma and Soma himself. While it is generally supposed that the Surya Siddhanta is the oldest, some consider the Brahma Siddhanta to be the oldest. However, of all the Siddhantas, it is the Surya that has always drawn the greatest respect and reverence and in which each topic is treated more fully than any other Siddhantas. Like many classical Indian works, the Surya Siddhanta is a poem in the Sanskrit language. It has 14 chapters and contains exactly 500 verses. The Sanskrit metrical style is the one called Shloka. In the video on the tale of the 27 wives of the moon, we saw the concept of nakshatras as being the 27 divisions of the lunar orbit. Each nakshatra has an identifier star called a yogata or the junction star. The Surya Siddhanta provides two ways of identifying the junction star. The first is by the brightness and the second is by its position within that nakshatra. There are many indications that the Surya Siddhanta has undergone several modifications in the past which in itself is a clue to the great age of the text. It is important to note that we are going to consider the modern Surya Siddhanta which has been translated into English by Ebenezer Burgess and edited by Fanindralal Gangul and the other translations of Bapudeva Shastri as well. These two are considered to be the authentic translations of this text into English. We are going to analyze the longitudinal and latitudinal data from Surya Siddhanta to find the year when it was composed. In chapter 8, verse 1 of the Surya Siddhanta, the first line says that longitudes are given in arc merits or 1 is to 60th of a degree. The second line indicates how to calculate the longitude of a star. For example, for the first nakshatra Ashwini, longitude is given as 48 in the text. We are called upon to multiply this by 10 to get the actual longitude in minutes, that is 480 minutes or 8 degrees. The question naturally arises, if the longitude is 480 minutes, then why not indicate this value directly instead of 48 into 10? This second line is a subtle way of indicating that the precision of 10 minutes of arc is intended for this longitudinal data. This means it also gives the correction factor that should be considered. So now based on this, you must be thinking that all the values in the Surya Siddhanta would be highly precise up to the 4th decimal places, right? This is where it surprises you. Let's take a look at the longitudinal data from Surya Siddhanta. A glance at the Surya Siddhanta longitudinal data shows that nearly 85% of the data has been rounded off to the nearest degree. This is like using meters instead of kilometers to describe the distance between two cities but then rounding up the value from meters to whole kilometers anyway. It might be possible that the original high precision data was overwritten with the values of the lower precision data at a later era. Perhaps because the great precision in longitude was considered to be a wasted effort. 
So let's try to find out when exactly was this update made to the Surya Siddhant. Longitudinal data is affected by axial precession, which as mentioned, results in a fairly rapid change to the star's position of nearly one degree in every 71 years. We therefore expect to see a sizable difference between the longitudinal data in the Surya Siddhanta and its modern equivalent. This difference is a measure of the time elapsed between the last update to the Surya Siddhanta and 2000 Anno Domina. We observe that for several junction stars, an approximate difference of about 20 degrees exists between them. From this, we may infer that the last update to the longitudinal data was made about 20 into 71, that is 1420 years ago, or about 580 AD, during the time of Varahamya. But still the question remains, when was this text composed originally? We know from the above observation that the last update to Surya Siddhanta was done in 580 AD. But when was the Surya Siddhanta or the first version of the Surya Siddhanta actually written? Let us take a look at the latitudinal data from Surya Siddhanta. Latitudinal data, unlike longitude, is unaffected by axial precession. But it can change due to two other reasons. The first one being the planetary precession and the second one being the proper motion of the star. Here then is the main difficulty in using the Surya Siddhanta's latitudinal data to determine its age. We are working with a variable that changes very slowly and to compound matters, the data we have is of low precision. Half a degree in latitude this way or that way translates to several thousand years this way or that way. The one exception to this imbroglio would be if the star had an exceedingly fast proper motion. And here we have the saviour in Arcturus or the Swati Nakshatra. Proper motion is the actual motion of a star in space. And Surya Siddhanta gives the evidence that they had measured this proper motion of Swati or Arcturus. Comparing the Surya Siddhanta latitudinal data for Arcturus with its modern value is an eye opener. There is a difference of more than 6 degrees. Here is then another hint of the great age of this text. But let us be cautious. All of the 6 degrees has not been caused by proper motion alone. Some of it, as we will see later, is due to planetary precession as well. To analyze this better, Anil Narayan, who is a former ISRO scientist, performed an analysis of the ecliptic variations and the proper motions of the stars. This analysis differentiates between the changed latitudinal data due to the planetary precession and due to proper motion. This thesis revealed some interesting results. One of the most astonishing assertions that it places is that from the latitudinal data, by varying the ecliptic obliquity, ecliptic node location, and ecliptic sync variation, together with proper motion, a match for the Surya Siddhanta latitudinal data was obtained in the time frame of 7300 to 7800 years before Christ, allowing for an error of 10 minutes of arc for the change in the Earth's obliquity, it will take this value back to about 5000 years before Christ, which is still extremely ancient. Can you imagine that ancient Indians were capable of taking such precise measurements about 7000 years before present? Unfortunately, we are oblivious to this genius of our Indian ancestors. So let us take a step forward and try to explore our ancient Indian texts with a factual perspective. Stay tuned, stay educated, and last but not the least, know your culture by self-investigating the truth. Shubhaste Manthanaha Santu, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Tana tana ta, tera kita tana tana ta, tet tet tera kita tera kita tet tet tana ta, tera kita tera kita ta, tera kita ta, tera kita ta, tera kita ta, tana tana ta, tera kita tana tana ta, tet tet tera kita tera kita tet tet tera kita tera kita ta, tera kita ta, tera kita ta, tera kita ta, tera kita ta.
करके गाते दा गाते दा गाते दा